and welcome back to the movie pope podcast and today we have another great guest on the show we have james Liget, um and he's going to be talking about himself and his work um but before we dive in remember to like comment subscribe and as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and let's dive in james my man how are you doing today uh, i'm good can't complain can't complain nothing um no nothing calamitous happened nothing like a meteorite falling from the sky or uh, anything. well it was a bit of rain earlier today but that's about it got it gotcha well it, it, it's the same here in, here in charlotte because it's it's raining like crazy so maybe it's just something that's happening all over the nor northern hemisphere um i mean i'm in the uk so make of that what you will yeah yeah you don't think it's witches or anything do you <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, 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 um, I, I want to go ahead and dive in. So James, um, why don't you go ahead and tell, tell us a little, a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do and, you know, what got you interested in, in filmmaking? Okay. Um, I recently graduated from university with a degree in film. I'm currently trying to find a full-time job and go make, use that job to go fund my main films, but another project, we'll get into that later. Um, mm -hmm. I first got interested in films I, I, when I was like young. I just really liked going to the cinema and watching them. As well as uh, watching them on DVD. And I, and... And, and I, at one point, I thought I was going to go into IT because I did better at it than I, at a secondary school or what you Americans would call high school. Mm -hmm. And so I went to college for two years to do an IT course. You're probably wondering how I got into media. It's actually very simple. I was I was supposed to start a summer job once I once I finished um, my two my first two years at college, mm -hmm. and it was everything was set. I was ready, and then they kept going. Oh, we'll tell you next week. I asked them when I start. We'll tell you next week, and just kept on and on during the whole summer. And then and then at the end of it, it was like I've got no choice. I have to go back to to college, and so I did two years of media there. And I just I was like, oh my. I've got films I want to make, <laughs> but I'm going to go do film now. It, 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 so it was just like that, that you just decided one day, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and make movies, you know, whatever, screw this. I, I, I mean, I mean, I was, I mean, if I hadn't been screwed out of the summer job, it's possible I may never have. So, um, so, so just out of curiosity, did they, did they ever tell you like why, or did they just keep saying, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll call you back, we'll call you back. No, it just kept. It was just like no, it just, it just kept going. It will take next week. We'll tell you next week, and just never happened. Oh my god! <laughs> and that's, and that, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, and I'm still trying to get a, a job. Like I graduated from uni a few months ago, and I still haven't got a full time job of any kind. I've only gotten one freelance editing job and a temporary job at a local event I'm doing right now. So, um, so, so what university did you graduate from? Uh, one in England. Okay, was it like Lancaster or Sheffield uh, or? Yeah, nah, a much more obscure one. Okay, gotcha. Nothing, nothing as big as the ones I mentioned. Nope. Uh, it's it, it's all right. I I, I went to school at you um, at the University of North Carolina Greensboro, and I studied film also. So nobody's ever heard of that. Um, so 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 in your formative years, when you when you were watching these movies, were there any particular directors, or was there any sort of um? you know movie or genre that kind of stuck out to you that that made you think wow this is this is pretty cool i want to see if i can try to have a go at this i fucking loved star wars <laughs> like I, I i just loved it there's no shame in saying that by the way so <laughs> I, I know i know i mean i grew up in both the original trilogy and the prequels so um so so so, so, so let me ask you this are you because i know a lot of people who are like this a lot of people are are, are 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 either for the original or they're against the um against the you know the new trilogies that came out are you of that mindset or are you one of those people who's like you know it's star wars whatever's whatever's coming out of lucas films i'm i'm, I'm up for it um i love the original trilogy i like the prequels i mean i admit they are heavily flawed but they do have their good stuff to them but disney have just mocked it up massively so what did you think of the um of the series that came out like Ahsoka and The Mandalorian and Book of um, Boba Fett? I really liked the first two seasons of Mandalorian. Then I got through a hot the first half of Boba Fett, thought this sucks, I just 
and based on and based on what I've heard, Mando season three isn't very good. I don't really care about Ahsoka. I will watch Andor because I heard it's really good, but time, but probably around the time you see nearer season two, so I can just go from one season to the next. I was a massive rating period. Mm-hmm. So, so what was it about Star Wars that 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 made you, you know that clicked with you? Was it like the general sci-fi element, or the story, or, or uh, what? I mean, let's see, let's see. As a child, I don't really think I understood the stories. I just really lo- loved looking at all the cool sci-fi shit on screen. So I mean, I mean, I mean, that's like that with with all of us. So I don't. Yeah, yeah. So I also remember the prior to that for a long time. The only time I went to cinema twice in one day was to go see the original Cars and Superman Returns in one day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, then then I didn't do it again until I stuck into a film festival in London for my birthday over the past few years. So, uh, so um, so just like you, I went I, w- I went to film school, um, and I got and I got my degree in filmmaking. The thing that re- the, th- the thing that the, the thing that I kept thinking about over and over again was I you know I want to make something that's you know, that's pretty cool that that that's you know that's going to leave a mark. Um, that everybody's gonna think to themselves, "Wow!" Like, remember when he made that film? It was like the best student film ever. Did you ever have that mentality when you were studying film, or you were just like, "I just needed to pick something"? Um, um, it was more. It was just more. Like, it, I like to entertain, so I like to make stuff that will entertain. Mm-hmm. So yeah, as time for Mark, I wasn't really thinking about it. I just thought something that will be entertaining because I've been told because often people laugh at my films. I don't intentionally make them hilarious. It's one, it's one of those. I think I'm just one of those filmmakers who makes unintentionally hilarious stuff. So, so they're sort of like, what, 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 when you're not consciously making comedy films, like what, what would the general tone be? Um, um, let's movies. see. I would say they're they're like. Well, I think the best way somebody described my film stream was dark with a sense of humor. Okay, so, like a dark, dark sense of humor that. kind of thing. Okay, gotcha. So, 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 so you mentioned Star Wars. Like, you know, was a huge inspiration. Were there any other films or genres or directors that you kind of pulled from to kind of, I, I, I guess, create your palette in terms um, of filmmaking? See. I think my favorite director is Tarantino. So yeah, uh, also, I also really liked watching cartoons when I was younger. Like I think my favorite was like Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> Phineas like, and Ferb was actually pretty intelligent um, for for a kid's show. Now that I think about it. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know. I mean, during the pandemic, I started watching more cartoons because I got access to Disney Plus, and and I was like, why could I have watched these shows when I was younger? Like Kim Possible, the Lilo and Stitch cartoon series, mm-hmm. Gravity Falls, so much good stuff. Well, 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 I was gonna say too because um because I recently interviewed um a writer who who used to work for Nickelodeon back in the nineties, um and and he was telling me how. How, how in terms of the writing there was just so much intelligence in the writing that you just don't see nowadays do you kind of do you kind of agree with that sentiment uh, or? i guess i have to i mean nickelodeon had the chance to be really big in the 2010s and they didn't because and you want to know why why what's up well you know adventure time mm-hmm. now originally that was pitched to nick i did not know that <laughs> yeah and you know what they rejected in favor of uh, who? Fanboy and Chum Chum. Are you really? I mean, I mean, they had, a, cha- they had a chance to, to go with Adventure Time, and they went with that. Holy, holy shit! Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the case because I think uh, the mysterious Mister N2 does lots of anime reviews on YouTube. Said it so. Because I mean, I, I mean, I mean, because you remember like watching those shows, like like a lot of the stuff that they did back then was pretty, you know, on the nose, like. Like, like for instance, like Ren and Stimpy. Like, when, when I think about it now, it's like, how the hell do they ever get away with this on TV? <laughs> I mean, I mean, compared to adult party cartoon, not, not really. I mean, I mean, I think Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon is like one of the worst cartoons ever. And but, and that and nobody likes to talk about Ren and Stimpy nowadays. So. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, but, but but I mean, like at the time, it was kind of like, what, what the heck is this, you know? And then yeah, it can be quite baffling. 
Yeah, and then it kind of piled on with like all the others, like you know, Rocco's Modern Life, Rugrats, you know, our real monsters, Doug, that kind of stuff. Um, so, so, so in terms of so in terms of your, of your filmmaking, like, I mean, do you see yourself more as like um like a like a photographer or a director or a writer or or, or I, mean, or what? I mean, due to productions in the in my productions and limited budget and people i have been a producer writer director sometimes actor editor and music composer for almost all of my films gotcha can you um can you walk me through the process of 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 you making a film like okay, okay, where, okay. Where, do you, where, where do you start and all that stuff Okay, okay. Let's let's do and let's do uh, my final year short film because that was the hardest one to uh, get done in pre production. Okay. So my so my plan was to go team up with the people I made my previous year short film with, and but there was a problem. Um, one of them, one of them dropped out, and then two decided they hated me. So I was back to square one. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, so and nobody from my year wanted to work with me for some reason, so I ended up having to rely on first year students. Oh god. And then one of them dropped out with a few days to go. Is it because they hated you? Uh no, they had they no, they were doing a professional production that overran. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got gotcha. super lucky because um, when I was in my third year of uni, I befriended the guy who lived opposite me at student dorms, and he was in some of my other in some of the films I made, not for uni, just while I was in uni dorms, and so he agreed on like super short notice to do it for free. Okay, gotcha. So, yeah, but anyway, so I was like, hmm, okay, I wanted to make something entertaining. Originally, I wasn't going to have it related to my to my multimedia franchise, which I'll explain later. But I eventually did. So I wanted to make a really, f and I just came up on the spot. Terrorists have stolen an experimental nuclear device, so the CIA sends their two best agents to go retrieve it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an interesting idea. And so, and we had to make the, f and the film had to be between five and 11 minutes. So, so that was between five and 11 pages. And originally the script was just, they, they get, they have a quick briefing to go to the UK, go to the disco bar, to, to a house where the terrorists are, kill them all, retrieve the suitcase with the suit, with the nuclear device inside, take it back to the CIA director and that'll be the end of it. But then the script was too short. So I decided to expand it. So now instead, the, that, so now instead the CIA director lied and it wasn't, a nuclear weapon it was gold stolen from fort knox <laughs> okay and and it's um it's also revealed that the uh, since in the end all of the terrorists were played by one person yours truly that they weren't twins they were f a failed cloning experiment by the cia who stole the gold so they could go use the funds to go get revenge against the cia Right, right. That sounds very CIA-ish. So, oh yeah, exactly. And I and I thought, hmm, what would be the appropriate fate for the CIA director? No, so I had so the two agents kill him after they find out he's responsible for their terrible childhoods, and um, they make his death look like an accident by having him by making it look like he slipped on the banana peel and broke his neck in the fall. <laughs> because I thought, what would be more? What would be more ironic than the world's most one of the most protected men in the on earth being killed in a freak accident or at least making it look like they were killed in a freak accident? Right. So yeah. So yeah, anyway. So in terms of production, I had initially I tried to crowdfund it, but it didn't go very well. So and but, but since I was using students, I had access to locations for free. So I had to think about think about what locations could I use? So first, I decided to go have the two CIA scenes at the U at the nearest uni building because I because I had to book out a room to do the test shoots, and um, I thought hmm, I like this room. You know, I'm not. I'm just going to use it for the um actual shoot. So yeah, and that's in the nearest uni building because I hired one professional actor for the film to, who was the CIA director because he could do an american accent and you know having it be in a unique building will help it legitimize the film to make it look like it was legitimate and not a scam of some kind it was done at a unique building as it was definitely a student film that's and i right. paid him one so it's all fine right. next i thought 
Wreck. Originally, I was going to use a house, use Airbnb to rent a house, but then I decided that was beyond my budgetary restrictions. So my um, oh yeah, my dorms had this break room where there was like a table, a pool table, and stuff. So I thought, you know what? I'll make it a disco bar, and I could add the disco lights in post production because I'd done it in for like a uni assignment before. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Then I and then I wondered where could the basement where the basement where they find out the terrible truth where they open the suitcase and stuff. And I decided that um it would make sense to go use a there was a few, there was a bottom of a staircase I could use at uni. And I found and I found one that was near an emergency exit, which so it wasn't too busy. So I decided to go use that. And then finally there's a short which I was gonna have the cow just walk around the city, but then I said, but then I changed it to them just, but then for the sake of simplicity and time, I just changed it to them um, going on the, because I, because my uni was near a, near the sea and there was a pier and I really liked the light that the pier, that the pier emanated f uh, from beneath it when it was nighttime. But I, and I wanted the characters to have to walk up there and then they'll go from there. But unfortunately, I misread the timings and so it wasn't on. So I had to go use a small street, a small back street next to it. That one was highly limited by the shot because the guy, since I got the guy on very short notice, um, he was busy that evening. And so now I'd recall the dialogue in advance because I've realized carrying around massive lots of equipment at nighttime probably wasn't a good idea. So I just had the so I so after we filmed the CIA scenes, I had the actors just do their dialogue, read their dialogue in outside so we could record it. And then have and then I had this really long tracking shot of the two characters walking, and I had to be the body double. So yeah. So how long? So how long was you know did, did all this take? Um, pre-production lasted months, and then the actual shoot was two days. Really? Yeah. Two um, days. More, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the morning we got the CIA director scenes done. Then in the afternoon, and, and I mean in the evening, we got the long tracking shot done. And fortune, unfortunately, the guy let me his jacket. We had the same trousers because of just jeans, and I wore a hat to hide our different hair. And we're pretty much the same height, so that worked out fine. Then on the morning, the second day, we shot the basement scene. With a, with, we had to do no rewrite because the guy was going to be delayed because he had a lesson. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the most frustrating one was the evening where we filmed the disco bar scene because originally I invited a lot of extras, and um, I was really looking forward to having this massive bar fight. But unfortunately, all the extras I invited either a too busy or b forgot to, forgot, and so only one extra showed up, which was a friend of one of the actors. I had to rapidly rewrite the script on set just to make sure it, the dialogue matched, lined up with all of the other dialogue from uh, scenes with all the shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very frustrating, but I'd been editing a little day and I had a full copy of the script, so I was just rapidly rewriting it. So it was like, oh, they have amnesia drugs now, so I can just get people off the street and make it look, look the whole looked like there was a massive bar fight and everybody just forgot because they were drunk and stuff right right so, so were yeah you, so were you pulling all nighters when you're when, when you had to like uh, do it was not all night i we were done before midnight gotcha but it must have been stressful though to have you know, having to do all those rewrites though at the last minute I, yeah yeah i mean it was the final i mean it was the final scene to shoot so it wasn't too bad but still it's just so but still it was well annoying i had to rapidly rewrite it okay it was the second last scene the last scene was the quick scene before the two agents that entered the disco bar i which i had so you know so it makes it look like they planned it and you know, and so and i needed a shot of the guy taking the hat off so we see from the tracking shot to that scene without any problems gotcha gotcha oh, so yeah. So so so, how long did post production take? Oh, uh, I I wasn't in the rush, so so I took my time with it. So I didn't have to do any reshoots. Uh, didn't have any. It took me a while to start the audio because it was the first time I'd ever used radio mics, and so I had to had lots of audio layers and channels to sort through. But within like a, a within the rig, I had a super rough cut, and I spent the next two months just perfecting it. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so over, so overall, how long was the was the process? 
Um, let's see. Since I was doing it for professional, because I submitted to film festivals, it took a few months. But if I wasn't submitting to film festivals and it was just a personal thing, I was going to put up on YouTube, like a lot of my other films, it mm -hmm. would be like a few days or a few weeks at most. Gotcha, gotcha. So, um, so, so you've already submitted it um, to festivals, and it's going through the through the run. Was that? Was yeah, that right? I mean, let's see. I came runner up at the uh, at a film festival in Greece. Even got a trophy for it. Oh wow! Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I let's see. There is an online film festival which is going through at the moment, and I have an in-person one in March. So I'm just waiting to hear back from two film fest film festivals I submitted to because they're not suit because you know some of them are pricier than others. So I spent like two hundred pounds submitting to about ten film festivals. All right, sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not spending any more money on that film. And 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 this is your um final student film. Yes. Um, right. Okay. Um. Can you can you talk about the um, other student films that you made? Um, okay, okay. so my so my first year film was a short film called Killing Charisma. Okay, and it was and it was short and it was and at this point the pandemic was still raging on and so we weren't allowed to go to, into other people's houses. So I was like, let's just get, go shoot something quickly in my front garden. So yeah, so the basic plot is this corrupt cop is chasing this woman so he can kill her. She hides, she, he enters her house and then she locks the door behind him which locks him in. They have a short dialogue and he reveals that he's a, actually a serial killer who kills charismatic people because he's jealous of the fact they're not charismatic, he's not charismatic. Mm -hmm. She then reveals that she secretly recorded his confession and he, and he, decide, and he kills himself to avoid going to prison. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then yeah, and it was uh, yeah, but yeah, and it, it was shot in like one day. Then there was no idea of reshoots, but 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 I was really rusty from not having filmed anything for over a year, and as a result, I forgot to turn off the automatic exposure. Oh, see, I've done that before, so I, yeah. I definitely know. Yeah, where you're I mean, from I mean, I mean, I was that. kind of surprised. Yeah, I was kind of surprised I actually passed that year with that film, but I used the excuse I was experimental, so. See, I wish I could have done the same thing, you know, in my case, but they told me to reshoot it. So uh, I basically had to go up, you know, two flights of stairs lugging a huge case. <laughs> I'm having to reshoot again. Oh, uh, uh, I oh, bad luck. My my film was only was only 3 minutes long, so I didn't have to worry about it. Well, I mean, well, well, well in my case, you know, I I was carrying, you know, the lighting kit with me. So if and 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 and, and I'm sure you, and I'm sure you're aware, you know, lighting kits pretty pretty heavy uh -huh. uh, yeah so yeah <laughs> yeah when i was shooting a film, yeah, short film i had to keep um taking the equipment from the kit room to my dorm to the building we were filming in which was the same as the kit room oh man it was really logging yeah but, i mean i mean you got your workout right there that's yep. that's for sure um so 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 so, so i want you to um talk to me uh, about um filming during a pandemic because a lot of the guests i've spoken to have said you know it, it, it's it's challenged them a bit to kind of find a way to work around those restrictions to kind of you know either organize a film festival or organize a film shoot what um what were your experiences like in 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 working with those circumstances i mean it was very annoying because um because the original script for king chris was that the, it would be the woman who was inside and the cop would be outside so I had to go change around because it was my mum's house, and so I and so um I was the cop, or at least the body. I got somebody I know to be the voice of the cop because he sounded really scary when he did he did that voice, mm -hmm. and and he sounded and he was and he's actually older, which makes sense for the cop. Whereas I still sound like a young adult slash an older teenager. So yeah. Anyway. And um, I had a very limited amount of people on set. We shot the whole thing with just a phone. No audio equipment or lighting or anything, just a phone. Really? Oh, my yeah, God. <laughs> and, yeah, and, um, the, oh, and the director's assistant never showed up, but I still credited him because I wanted him to pass, and then he didn't. Oh, so... <laughs> so, that, yeah, so that was a good, that was a good deed that went to waste, basically. Yeah, well, I tried. Yeah, yeah that's true. So, what yeah. about your? So, what about your um, other student film? Okay, that's so my one. second year short film was um, 
I mean, I do have something that made a call, but I'll explain in a bit. Anyways, so my second year short film was Conflict of Interest, and it's about a bank robber who's been ruined after a bank heist, and they break into the home, but home of someone because they think it's empty and they need medical supplies, but it turns out to be a corrupt a cop who's been suspended because he beat up a suspect who wasn't resisting the rest. They have a small dialogue and they make a deal. Um, the cop will, the, the ex cop will save the bank robber and in exchange the bank and he'll, they'll split the money. <laughs> okay. So yeah, um, the basic thinking was that we will all do, because everyone in my group was um, doing a module where we had to get work experience. I did two weeks they post production house where I was a run post production run and spent one day as an edit assistant. Anyway, and I was like, okay, dudes, we all have limited time. So how about this? I got this film we can shoot in one day for like a few hours and super cheap. Uh we felt so we did that. Um it was the first time I ever worked with professional actors because one of the teachers recommended we get used to it. So and the producer, I wasn't mm. producing it because one of the teachers recommended because I was doing a lot of the other jobs, which I later came to regret because originally in the script the cows had fake guns and we got all the permission from the teachers to go have fake guns because they never actually fired them. Right. And, um and I sent an Amazon page of fake guns to the producer. I was like, I don't care what ones you get, just get two different ones. And the producer, in his infinite wisdom, somehow got two gun holsters. <laughs> and he didn't bother to check until the day of filming. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, I, yeah, it's, yeah. I still remember it because um, the because the first because what happened was that the first, the second, the actress was, was only ready in the afternoon. So, and after we shot something in the morning from our project, as I'll explain later, mm -hmm. the sec the actor showed up so he could sh shoot his solo scene, and and so we opened up the Amazon boxes, and I was and I was just staring at two gun holsters. I just thought. Fuck, and we didn't have time to get any more, so we did the only safe alternative butter knives. <laughs> I was imagine, I, 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 in my mind, I was imagining like you know, you know, the guys have their fingers in the gun holsters and they kind of pull and they're like pew, 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 kind of like that. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm that, that's not funny. That's what I was just thinking in my mind, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, well, that's kind of the thing <laughs> in my mind where I had that massive falling out with some of the people involved with that film for my third year short film. Well, that was yeah. heartbreaking. So, um, so, 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 what happened during production of that, um, of that film, Conflict of um, Interest? It was, it was a one. It was only a one day shoot. Um, I would say it went well. I did my shots first, then I let the producer do his shots, and most of which I didn't use because I thought they were trash. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, he did this really long tracking shot outside, which I used some of because it was because because originally it was just the one scene of the cop watching the TV, watching the news report about the bank heist, and right. him drinking with a plastic with a plastic cup which I had, which broke on the second, which had the handle break off on the second take. So we had so 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 and so there's some takes where he's just holding a plastic glass. With no handle, but anyway, and um, the problem with hit with the track and shot was that um, you could see, clearly see the reflection of the cameraman in a lot of it. This is the producer shot, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so yeah, so I so I heavily cut it up, and because originally I only had one shot outside of the bank robber running up against the wall, going, "Fuck, that hurts!" In relation to the rune and one north, but unfortunately I shot it out from the wrong direction, and it looked and I couldn't flip in post because then the rune would change. So I put the dialogue just before the act, the uh, actress entered the shot of one of the tracking shots, and then I used a bit of warp stabilizer and crop in, and just a lot of trims, and you only get short bursts of her slowly crossing out into cut with the new with the pop watching the news report mm -hmm. yeah uh so yeah uh and let's see um they also went for the confrontation on uh, the producer did this really long tracking sh shot of the scene which he which which he naturally didn't bother to tell anyone so, um, until shortly before we shot it so it took a few tries to do it 
I didn't use it because I had to get rid of because I got rid of the dialogues. Because originally those dialogues was about the, how the guns were illegal, so on so we changed to being knives being illegal, but that just didn't make any sense because knives aren't illegal, especially when they're just butter knives. And so I was and so I had to rearrange the dialogue in post so that to get rid of that. But in the long track and shot, it can be it wouldn't have got rid of, but not by call. Right, right. So, um yeah. So, 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 was the producer just not paying attention, or was, or were they unaware of how? I, I mean, I, I mean, since I've had a massive falling out with him, I'll never, I'll probably never know. I mean, he got all the other props correct. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. mean, obviously, obviously, gun holsters are are a pretty big thing that you need because, as everybody knows, you put butter knives in gun holsters. <laughs> I mean, we uh, just didn't end up using the gun holsters in the end. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, on the hey, and it was the first time I worked with fake blood because the producer got some fake blood of Amazon, and I put it over the uh, black jumper my actress was wearing, which was my, which was just my mum's black jumper. So that was an experience. Right, right. Um, so, uh, so, 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 in, term, in terms of you know studying um, film production at university, I know. Um, I, I, I know for the most part, most people, they usually start doing an internship or volunteer work within like the later half of their, um, of their studies. You mentioned that you, that you worked, um, at a production house. Um, what was that experience like? Yeah, it was an all right experience. It was very tiring having to commute to that sit to London multiple times. Like, uh, how do people do it on a regular basis? I was exhausted of, of it after just two weeks, like five days. Oh, I mean, I mean, I made sure to always walk there, not use the underground to go, so to go save money because because uh, I had to go get because I had to go show up there like at nine a.m. and so and train tickets are more expensive than before 9 a.m. in this country so yeah um it was a right experience i spent most of my time in the kitchen because there was a post-production house and um, i spent most of my time in the kitchen just putting stuff away but i spent one day as an editor assistant because there was a free editing streak as one the people didn't show up but the funniest mm -hmm. thing happened on this day where it very lightly snowed and um, they they were making an advert for like alcohol, so they got so they showed me three different alcohol brands. It was like go to the local supermarket, it was like twenty minutes away, and go buy them. <laughs> and it was the first time I bought alcohol, so I walked for twenty minutes, and I got there, and I accidentally entered through the e exit because I'd never been in before. But anyway, and I could only find what one, one of the alcohol products. And you know how alcohol products have those big tap things on th them that mm -hmm. beep if they don't get taken off for your exit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I went to the self checkout because it saved time and queues, and I and I and I didn't take mine off, so so I left and arrived back at the post production place with the tag still on. <laughs> I have no idea how security didn't stop me. I don't. I mean, I mean, no, nobody ever came up to me or anything. I, mean, I had the receipt, so they, I could prove it was mine. But still, they just never asked. So that right. was. Right. I mean, I'd never bought alcohol before because I only have alcohol once. I only get drunk once a year, but still, bizarre. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, did you learn anything, or or, or did you like build any connections when you were working at the production house, or? I feel like, you... let's see. One of the people there brought one of my books, but then he just stopped talking to me on LinkedIn. So I was like, oh, never mind. Ugh, LinkedIn. Don't get me started on that. Yeah, I've wasted I've wasted many conversations on that platform. It's like, I mean, why? You know, why even bother? You know, I mean, I had to do it for my assessment for my assessment module because you know about getting the work experience. Like, I I emailed thirty companies in one day, and the one who I said yes was the only one who said yes. Which one was that? Do you know? The one in London. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. But the others, they, they they didn't they didn't you know respond or anything, right? Uh, some responded, but they just said no. Okay, gotcha. So, uh, so so how hard um how hard is it to to try to break into the film Super industry? Hard. Like like I've only gotten one freelance editing job, which I which should be released later this month because it's a live music performance. So they're just finishing the mix and first of all, they edited all the video and stuff. Okay, because and 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 probably this is just me being an American, so excuse me for that. Um, but 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 I but I always assume that in, you know in in Europe, in you know in countries like the UK or France or Germany, I assume that the film industry is going to be a bit more um, a 
bit more welcoming just because you, you know you know the talent pool is probably not as big as as what you get in the u.s you know is that what well, i'm assuming well, that, i'm assuming that's not the case based on what you're telling me well there are strike well there were strikes going on for ages so that probably didn't help. That's not have autism and dyspraxia, so it's probably less appealing to employers to get try and hire me. Oh wow! Yeah. Have, um. Have Have any of your um, have any of your classmates been successful in 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 getting jobs, or are they pretty much in the same situation as you are? I mean, and I mean, and one. I mean, some of my classmates came together to form a production company. I mean, I mean, it's not really a company, but that's what well, that's what well, that's what they call themselves. And they've so got it's, like a, it's like a collective kind of thing. Yeah, right? and they've okay. got quite a few um, freelance jobs so far, but that's because they're all together, and so you know, and they can also be specialized in the one thing, whereas whereas I was forced to specialize in almost everything. So, gotcha, gotcha. So. So, so at the moment you're 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 trying to you're trying to land that job in in the industry. Have you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've even sort of like a non-street jobs now because then I can get a full-time job. Some kind of going then going to use that money to go make films in my spare time. Gotcha, gotcha. But but ideally, you know, you want to be doing this full time, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I think at video editing is the best for me when it comes to working for somebody else because then I don't have to show up and set super early. Yeah, I and I, I, I mean, I remember, I remember talking to this one guy. He um, he worked as a production assistant, and he was like, "Man, like the hours that you put in, like they, like they don't often need you, but when they do need you, sometimes you're there for like ten hours straight." And then he's like, "I, you know, I don't know how long I can keep doing this." And he eventually, you know, went and became a beekeeper. So <laughs> I don't blame him. I mean, I, I mean, the episode's coming out next week, so I mean, you'll you know, so you'll get to hear a story about how he, um, how he decided, you know, he just wanted to go ahead and become a beekeeper just because the hours are just so long and the and the work is just so, so grueling, as you, you know, as you've attested. Um, have you? I mean, I mean, have you have you have you thought about like doing any individual any other individual projects, or are you pretty much just hampered by? By the current situation that you're in at the moment. I mean, let's see. Um, when I was when I was living at uni dorms, um, I made a bunch of short film sequels to my second year short film, mm -hmm. and and I do have a few ideas for because uh, because my plan is I have three audio, I have um three short films I'm going to make next year, uh, and one audio ambitious audio plate. And the year after that, I, got, I want to go make my first proper feature film because I made a feature film. I, I started making one when I was at college and I finished it at um, uni. It's 49 minutes long and it's called A Series of Random Events. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was so pissed off when COVID happened because I was just, because, because, um, I, because it hadn't been for COVID, I could have finished, finished it within a year. But because of COVID, I had to do wait for ages, and I couldn't get most of the cast back. So I had to do cry, lot, cry a few rewrites and semi recastings. Semi because I had to go use footage of both actors. So yeah, so I had to go explain why that was, and then and I got you the opportunity to go tie it into some of my other feature films because they all take place in the same universe. So yeah, so yeah. Anyways. So, anyways, my universe is called the Random Wars, and it's called that because one day this guy called Bob Random found out the Illuminati existed, so he killed them all. Now he's go around the world hunting down all their partners. And the feature film I want to make in two years' time is his origin movie about how he found out the Illuminati, how he killed them, what happens after he finishes killing all of them. No, <laughs> wow. Yeah, I've also written a few books that take place in the same universe as well. So, gotcha. I mean, I mean, I mean that sounds actually sounds pretty pretty exciting too. So the Illuminati, they 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 have what multiverse traveling capabilities? I'm guessing. Um, let's uh, let's see. There are some multiverse elements, but it's not by the Illuminati. But 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 well, at least themselves, because Bob wipes them all out as their partners. He's hunting down. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll see. I mean, if you've, if I mean, it's I mean, I, I mean, I do have plans to do more multiverse stuff because at the moment, my, at least by the time this episode releases, um, I've recent 
I there's an audio play uh, which series that I'm doing daily for almost two weeks, and it's called and it's a sequel to two of my it's a crossover sequel to my other films and roles. Two cows is going to multiple alternate universes, and they keep running to alternate universe Bob Randoms. Okay, uh, so 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 Bar so Bob Random is he is is he just like going after the Illuminati like exclusively, or is he going after anybody who's traveling the multiverse like i mean i mean he primarily goes after i mean he i mean he primarily stays on one of because he doesn't because he's not really too familiar with multiverse travel okay so because he doesn't because you know he and he because he all the all the evil people he wants to kill on like on, on like on the earth he's on so he's just going around so he's primarily going after them but he will go on the, after other evil people if he doesn't like them all right so he's sort of like an amoral kind of character. He's uh, more ambiguous, I'd say so. So it's sort of like Rick Sanchez then from Rick and Morty, sort of. Uh, yeah, but nowhere near was mean. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, 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 so he's kind of like this amoral character, but he doesn't really, I, I, I guess, come off at, at as as that kind of person, right? No, no, he's very no. He, he he's not too intelligent, but he's not a complete moron either. And he and he and he does do and he does and I, I would say he tries to be nice, you know. And he he does what he thinks is the right thing. So, but at the same time, he's he has killed a lot of people. So, so it's sort of like you know the the character from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but if he was a murderer, um, uh, kind of. of. <laughs> I mean, gotcha. I mean, I mean, you can see him in action in a series of random events where you see him like, track, track down and kill at least a few Illuminati partners. I'm actually really excited to, to, to learn more about this. You've really piqued my interest now. Um, I, I, I mean, have you thought about like doing like webtoons or, or anything like that to kind of get the work I mean, out? I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I tried to do animation at college, but I was utterly terrible at it. So. Besides the three short films and the ma and the audio play I want to do next year, because my audio play is going to be "What if Bob Random was in the Wizard of Oz?" And the Wizard of Oz book is public domain, so I can do it. I know. I, I actually, actually, actually did something similar last year uh, on my channel. <laughs> Oh, cool. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I am trying to figure out the story. Like, have you ever played a game called No One Lives Forever 2? I've heard about it. I haven't played it. It's that in the first game are really good. I mean, you can't get them officially because of complicated rights issues, but you can get free fan versions. And don't play Contract Jack. It sucks. But the first two games are really good. Okay. And there's a game in the uh, second and there's a level in the second game where you're going through. I think it's a trailer park somewhere. And it ends with you. If I recall correctly. Fighting the ninja in the house that's in midair because of a tornado. <laughs> so yeah, my op so yeah, the opening to my work to, to Bob's Wizard of Oz would be something like that, and it would be Bob goes to uh, Oz and caught and accidentally causes a lot of violence. Like like you know what you know, like remember when the jitterbugs attack? Yeah. I'm already imagining Bob pulls out a flamethrower to kill them, and he accidentally burns down the forest. <laughs> and he's an environmentalist, so he'd probably feel really bad about it. Yeah, the irony of it all. <laughs> yeah. But 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 you haven't really gotten that far yet, right? It, well, yeah, I still have to write it. I have written the three short films I'm going to make next year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm really looking forward to them, because they're... Cause so yeah, I know one of them can be done for like super cheap. I just go to talk to the guy about it. Um, let's see. I've only worked with three professional actors ever, and only one of them multiple times. So yeah. So yeah, but I do try to get non-professionals because you know they can do it for free. Yeah, exactly. And easier and they're just easier to control. Although I've been very lucky with my professionals, you know, they've always been really nice, very reliable. Although the fact I always pay them in advance probably helps ensure that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like if you like, people are a lot nicer if you you know if you give them cash or if you show them the cash, and then they're like, oh yeah, they're a bit more amenable that way. Yeah. Um, so. So what's the so what does the future look like for you? Um, because you're because you graduated from university, you've got you, you've got this really really great concept of a universe that I 
I would really love to see happen. What? Yeah, what's yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll send you the playlist of the stuff I've made so far. I've put them all in the um order they're supposed to be watching, which is mostly chronological. So, okay. So, so where do you go from here? Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, I know I want to go make some fan films in the future. Like, um, have you heard of Sleepaway Camp? I think so. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, Sleepaway Camp two and three are really good. Then they tried to make a Sleepaway Camp four, but then the um, production company went bankrupt. So, so it only had thirty minutes of, in my honest opinion, really crappy footage, which may or may not have been test footage. But anyway, and so years later, they they made so they they finished it and i'm not kidding here about 90 percent of the film is just footage from the first three films right so yeah with 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 a text crawl to explain the opening and the ending which is really lazy anyway then 2008 the original the director of the first film made return to sleep weekend which ignored two and three and it was terrible um, of, co of course obviously the last thing we've gotten was a short film surrounding a character from the first film in 2014. So yeah, I want to go make my own version of Sleepaway Camp 4, because it, it's an interesting idea, but the execution, it was abysmal, even ignoring the unfinished nature. And the, less, uh, and the treatment doesn't seem to be finished, because there's a few obvious plot gaps I want to fill. So yeah, and also, and also I'm just trying to figure out how it would be the end of the Sleepaway Camp story, because... Yeah, the, because I can't really go into much without spoiling the fucking fantastic end of the first film, which is like one of those shocking things you'll ever see. Right, right. So we are. Um, so 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 that's on your to-do list as well as the um series of random events. Um, I mean, okay, I've already made the series of random events. It's the on the random worst stuff that's on my mind. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. So, so yeah, yeah, I've also got more novels I want to write because it's because part of Bob, Bob's backstory is that one that was that he went to a to a school called Hazel Dick, <laughs> and um one and they went to an, and there was an, a rival school called Oreo, no relation to the biscuit, right? And then, one, <laughs> and then one day, um, one of the students from all from Oreo was murdered and they found the Hazel Dick uniform at the crime scene and this caused everyone to think that the Hazel Dick student did so every single Oreo student went to Hazel Dick there was a massive battle and almost everybody died and Bob is one of the few survivors and the reason he survived was because he fell asleep in the lesson before the battle and everybody thought he was already dead <laughs> So yeah, anyways, and the novels follow another survivor called Alan Smith. And in the first book, um, he he has learned difficulties because because his brother tried to kill him when he was younger, but right? and he has really really pale skin as a result, and nobody wants to hire him. And he's only safe from unemployment, but because of his twin, because of his sister Athena, who gives him money while she goes does sports stuff and unemployment benefits. But then one day, this evil politician thinks that people are just lazy and he wants to stop unemployment benefits now alan has to stop him and of course bob random gets involved of course <laughs> so yeah so yeah then 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 i've written three more novels um one of let's see the second one it sees alan finally catch up with bob and then the third one sees him go up against the evil politician. Then the fourth one is an integral taking place between immediately after the first book. So, because so to go expand on some events that happened, and also as and it, acts, and it acts as a prequel to a series of random events. I've also done a few audio plays as well. Um, the first one is bridges the gap between the novel and the series of random events. Then the next few I've done were. See, were intercruels in the short films I made while I was at uni dorms. Mm -hmm. um, I also made a prequel to my second year short film, which re which as of recording was released last month. And then I've and then uh, the final one I've done so far is the crossover sequel to two of my other films. So yeah, I've got plenty of experience in law fields now. So um so, so so are you publishing them on Amazon or, or Oh yeah, yeah. they're self-published on Amazon. I've made almost no money off of them, but 
I, again, like, again, I again, I've done the same thing, so I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I, I, I'm currently writing the fifth book, but it's taken a good while, and it's about what well, because essentially Alan Smith is chasing after Bob Random, and that, and I'm also using the book to go fill in some of the gaps for of stuff I wanted to be in series of random events, but things like budget and casting reasons meant I couldn't. So right, right. So yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, I never want to go spend three years in one project again. That was a nightmare. <laughs> and I, like, like I filmed most of it in two weeks when my mom went on holiday, so I had the house all to myself. Like, what, like I, like one of the guys from college, I was able to bring back, but it's only available for an hour, so I had to go shoot two scenes in an hour. Which but I mean, I mean, but I mean, but but that is pretty efficient though, because it makes you very, you know very much well aware of, of of what you need to do within a short period yeah. of time yeah and part uh, of that so far is because i've mostly shot indoors and i don't and i've just shot with a and i primarily shoot with a phone than just a phone okay gotcha. i mean i i mean i am trying to i mean i'm looking to upgrade my audio but i'll keep shooting the phone because it's quick and it's and it's efficient and it's cheap and you know i'm trying to save as much money as possible now, just out of curiosity, do you own like any any any, any special equipment like uh, like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera or anything like that? I mean, or... I, mean I I own a tripod for my phone, and I think okay. I'm gonna get some audio equipment soon, some cheap ones, of course. I think it's like a shotgun mic. So, yeah, I'm just looking. So, yeah, I'm just trying to improve my audio because because I want to try and shoot outdoors more because so there's less. So there's less potential claustrophobia because for my fa because of the because my sequels to my family short film was mostly shot indoors, right? Right. Yeah, with the exception of the last one, at least what's currently the last one, which is five, because a friend of mine made made an unfinished Doctor Who fan film and he let me use footage of it in the uh, film in the film. So there's some outdoorsy stuff there, but I didn't actually shoot any of that myself. I still I just shot a bunch of indoor stuff to go tire thing together. And then, of course, I've I've also used quite a bit of stock footage to save money. Right, right. And it's, all, and it's almost always from Pexels because that's free stock footage. Yeah, I use um I use Pexel and Pixabay um you know for, you know for 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 some of my stuff. So yeah, yeah. And there's sometimes I really want to include pieces of stock footage I just can't. Like for example, that for example in the uh, fifth in the, like in Conflict Interest 5 which is one of the uh, sequels I just mentioned um, I wanted to that there's a category called for rent and I found a really good piece of stock footage about a, about a camera slowly going through rent so it looks like a beer reshot but I couldn't use it because it cost like £60 to bot to use I'm like I'm not paying £60 like for 10 seconds of footage really? damn yeah. Yeah, I know. Or for, or for example, when there was a hospital monitor shot, and I'm serious, a random was with rent. I got lucky because they have a preview, and so I was just able to mask out the logo, so I didn't have to pay to use it. Mm -hmm. But still, I mean, that's a lot you got to work around. Um, exactly, exactly. But I'm a king of hyper low budget films at this point. So. <laughs> well. My friend, you truly are a master at it. You've you've pretty much earned your stripes when it comes to that. Yeah, now, um, if only people would hire me to for these editing jobs because I'd be happy to do them. I was gonna say if you live, I was gonna say you know if you if you lived here in the states, I could probably hook you up with a few people. Um, I I mean I mean I mean I can just I mean that's the good thing about editing. As long as you have a computer and a good internet connection, you can you can pretty much do it from anywhere. So yeah, so yeah, if you know anyone who's who needs editing and is willing to pay for it, just let me know. Gotcha, gotcha. I'll um I'll, I'll definitely um I'll definitely keep my ears open on that one. Um, but um I, I want to go ahead and um wrap this up. But um but before we before we go, just a few things. If people want to reach out to you, if they want to check out your work, where can they do that? Uh, my YouTube channel, which is called James Leggett Productions, okay. and um, you can tell it's mine because it has my face on the logo. Um, you can find my fiction films in the playlist called The Random Worse. I have also made some other stuff, for example, my, I've made a few mini documentaries like James's first nightclub experience, James's last days in student dorms, um, James goes to a nightclub on April Fool's Day. And my personal <laughs> current personal favorite, James's first pub crawl. <laughs> I 
I've also I also did a month of reacting to Indiana Jones fan films to go celebrate the release of the new Indiana Jones film, which I spent a majority of my last days at uni dorms doing. Oh my um, god! We should, I mean, we we should definitely we should definitely bring you on to do some reviews with us because because we would love to get your take on some of these movies. <laughs> sure. Um, but um, we're gonna go ahead and um, wrap this up. But um, but before we do, James, um, I know you I know you mentioned this before, but what's your favorite movie or TV show that you're watching at the moment that you think is you know pretty cool and you want to give a shout out to? See, watching at the moment. Well, I'll tell you my favorite movie of all time. It's okay. Highlander. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Really, and then, really um, one. Have you ever heard of the Nemesis films? Yes. I haven't seen any of them, but I know, but I have, but I've known people who talk, who talked about it quite a lot. Okay. 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 Long story short. One, one is fucking amazing. Two, three and four are good, but very different. Five sucks ass. Don't watch it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a, they've also there was another one that's been shot, but due to various production issues, hasn't been released. And the director died last year. Because Widow said he would she would do everything to get to get his unfinished films finished and released. So be on the lookout for that in the future. Gotcha, gotcha. So that's so so, so that's you know the I guess series or franchise that you want to give a shout out to then, right? Nemesis. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, I recommend a lot of Albert Pion films, but the problem with a lot of his films is that he worked for anyone who had funded his films, and so some of them are, are very hard to find. Although, after his passing last year, something made this Google Drive, which contains a bunch of his hard to find films that never got a that never went beyond a DVD or laser disc release. Oh, okay, yeah, he, gotcha. yeah, they definitely deserve to get a proper treat blu-ray treatment just to make sure just make them e more easily accessible like a lot of his films are really good like for example there's this one called spitfire which is have you ever heard of a film called jim carter yeah i have well it's kind of well spitfire is pretty much the female equivalent of jim carter but it's better because it's also kind of a james bond parody like you know how james bond sleeps with tons of women oh yeah <laughs> well, spitfire is kind of like what if this means he has a lot of illegitimate children? Other, other gonna say STD. <laughs> so yeah, there's yeah, there's tons of great stuff though. Gotcha, gotcha. Just out of curiosity, um, do, do you watch the show Archer? Uh, I've, I've seen clips of it. I haven't watched it yet. I'm at the. Let's see. I've recently watched the Scott Pilgrim anime, which I rather enjoyed. Okay. Uh, I'm slowly making my way through this Star Trek the original series because I haven't really watched much Star Trek TV series because there's just hundreds of episodes to go through. Um, I'm kind of putting the pause on anything watching too long at the moment because I've got my temporary job at the moment, which lasts through until the end of this month. So, you know, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty tired in the evening, so I'm not watching anything too long at the moment. But yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm not sure what I watch next, but I have plenty of my watch lists. So, well, I was gonna say like if you if if you are watching um, James Bond parodies, Archer is a pretty good show because it's a very well written show. Yeah. It's, a, it's it's an animated show too, and and, yeah, and I, it, I'm not heard of it. It, oh, I mean, it's just so hilarious, just the way that the dialogue's just rapid fire. Like that's what I love the most, most about it. Yeah, and um, there's also. A but the strangest James Bond parody was released in the 60s and it's called Operation Kid Brother or OK Conway. Yeah, I, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, the reason why it's so crazy is because um they got Neil Connery's Sean Neil Connery's Sean Connery's brother Neil to play the main character who's heavily oh, yeah. yeah, right. who's heavily that's implied right. to be the brother of a secret agent. And the and his bosses are played by Bernard Lee and Lois Maxwell. <laughs> and then there's also the fact that um there's all he, there's also a bunch of other Bond people like Anthony Dawson from Doctor No, um the love love interest from From Russia with Love, the bad guy from Thunderball. It's pretty much a who's who of bat sixties bat bad guy Bond villains. <laughs> It's That's just so nuts. Cool. Oh my god! I mean, I mean, you're giving me a lot to chew on now because uh -huh. uh, 
so yeah I'll, I'll definitely check that out but um but we'll go ahead and um, bring this episode to an end but i just want to thank you james for taking the time to be on this episode and on this podcast and i definitely do want to bring you back for future episodes so just let me know how, how things look for you um and as always i just want to thank all y- y'all for taking the time to watch this episode remember to like comment subscribe and check out other content on the channel and as always we'll catch you on the flip side ciao thank you bye oh